Welcome back, Central Valley Foodies. This week we have Mike and Nori Naylor of Naylor Organics out of Dinuba. Welcome, guys. Thank you very much. How are you guys doing this week? Doing very well. It's great to have you. Yeah, I go through all these, um, you know, different accounts on in Google and, um, you know, Central Valley Foodies, The as a show, it's been on for a couple months now and we bring on all these different um, guests, restaurants and farmers and um, kind of just everything food, food related. I said, why don't we bring on these farms? I really wanted to touch on some of these farms in the valley. Um, I love fruits and vegetables myself and kind of wanted to um, educate our audience on everything that kind of grows here in the valley because we're so blessed with um, being in the most, you know, uh, agricultural uh, producing region in the U.S. And I just think it's really cool that we touch on some of the stuff you guys got here. And so I want to hear about your guys' this organic um, farm. Um, so how long how long you guys been there? Like in the 70s, I believe? Oh, yeah. I started farming in 1979. Uh, my dad bought the ranch in 63, <coughs> and I converted to organics in 84. So it was originally conventional, and you con converted yes. a few years later. Yeah. Um, what What was the What was the move for that? You just um, was it a personal or was it a customer base? Or? It was an observation. Okay. Uh, you know, we we're using some uh, pesticides, and uh, neighbors had chickens, and they <coughs> got out in the field and. They got dead. I said, this stuff's too hot. <laughs> and then I realized, you know, to distinguish myself in the market as well, I decided to go organic just to give myself a little better look. Yeah. And uh, and it's easier. It's easier. It's better for the, the yeah. soil. Yeah. Is it yeah. better for the soil? Yes, it's it is. It's much yeah. better. Much better for soil. Yes. Yeah. Much it's, better. It's, it's like, easier how? <laughs> <laughs> uh you don't have to really focus on, on timing of, of your pesticides and your herbicides. I don't have to use herbicides. And the really upside is because I have a lot of native things growing out in the field. There's a lot of edible foods out there. Mm. So I'm working the field. I go, oh, I can eat this weed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, But now everybody's figured out, yeah, growing organic stone fruit is relatively you know, not complicated. Back when, so back when you started doing organics back in the day, was that uh, was that popular doing that back in the day, or was that kind of? I was of, the first fool on the block. You're the fir first guy in the area doing that. Uh, actually, Paul Buxman was. Paul Buxman. And but you know who do I talk to? You know, I asked my dad. I asked dad, what, what did Grandpa do when he sprayed for these things? You know, uh -huh. it's like you know, what do you do for mites? He said, well, we just they used to go down to the ice house and get ice water, a block of ice, and put it in a tank and spray their trees. To kill the mites. That was a natural way of, of yeah. spinning off anything you could. And so, okay, and so I just had to learn and adjust, and then Curdy Field Station started using me as a, as a research site because I'm the only one, you know, that's. It was doing it in the area. It was doing it in the area. Yeah. And so I got a lead on, a, on some of the new, new techniques when we started using some of the bioorganic stuff. Yeah. And uh, so you said, late, you said late 70s, and so that was, uh, that was a. Uh, that was a moving time, too, for a lot of people who are becoming more kind of health conscious, too, huh? Well, the ALAR scare was that time, on the apples. Oh, okay. So what's that? Uh, I think it was called ALAR. It, uh -huh. was, it was something that was sprayed on the apples, and oh. and uh, it hit a red flag, and, and that became a big deal. And people got real worried and people started more conscious. Worried. They, got, they became health conscious. They started going, what, what is on our food? Uh -huh. And... Uh, well, nothing. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> nothing. yeah. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, at the time when I was transitioning, they had two separate farms, and they both had the same, you know, commodities. Both pe all all the same peaches. And uh, excuse me, one farm I did conventional, one I did organic. And uh, at that mm. time, the stores were testing. Were testing for uh, pesticide residue. Oh, okay. And at that time, you could tell no difference because I never sprayed past bloom. So the fruit never got anything on it. Never got anything on it. And uh, so it's, you know, it, and I, the price difference was almost none when I started. In other words, yeah. organic was a price. And oh, yeah, conventional, oh, it's about the same price. Now it's like double. Huh. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what specifically it goes for, but, you know, it seems like. It, it's it depending it's, what store you go to. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, I, my history is we always put together a super high quality piece of fruit. Yeah. 
You know, my grandfather's label was Naylor's Nectar Peaches, world's best. You got to stand good for that. You got to stand good for that. <laughs> Nothing extra on that stuff. So what? So what? Uh, stone fruit. So what? What do you? What? Where's that extent to? So you have peaches. What else do you guys grow? We have plums. Plums. Nectarines. Apricots. Nectar. Did I get them all? Peaches, plum, nectarines, apricots. Yeah. yeah there's only four. Yeah. Um, and that's on uh, about 40 acres, right? This is actually on four acres. We have a lot of different stuff for you pick. Okay. When I was doing conventional, <coughs> I was I focused on peaches and nectarines. Apricots are tough, and plums I couldn't turn a profit on. So tell us about uh, tell us about your your farm concept uh, for my foodies audience out there. Uh, these guys they uh, they have sort of a European style um, experience for their farm. It, you can. Uh, stay there and uh, as well as pick their fruit. Can you guys talk about a little bit about that? So um, in 2010 approximately we um, decided to re we, were, we had remodeled we were remodeling Mike's parents home and it was Mike's idea to try to do a farm stay and so we remodeled it to include exterior entrances, private entrances for the all four bedrooms in the house and uh, private baths. And um, we opened it up in 2010 for guests to come and stay uh, in our home with, uh, in, in the three different rooms. Okay. And so each room has a theme. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So kind of like a bed and breakfast type, and type it's, thing? Yes, it's, it's very similar to a bed and breakfast. Um, and we uh, decided to, um, yeah, to have guests in our home. We, would, we prepare the breakfast, and we would sit down with our guests at the table and enjoy breakfast together and have conversation. And then Mike would take them on a farm tour. Wow. And they'd get to go out and uh, pick fruit at, in season. So this is a seasonal so, farm stay. Seasonal farm stay. Yes, yeah. we do open in February um, because of the uh, Tulare Egg, the World Egg Expo in Tulare. Yeah. So we're usually booked up, fully booked for that. Um, and then the blossoms come, and then we have uh, a little bit of a space where there's not a lot going on on the farm. And then the fruit, when the fruit comes, is yeah. most popular. So we're open from February until November, mid-December every year. Now, do you guys get, um, do you guys probably get people from all over, huh? I from mean, all over the world. From yeah. all over the world. Okay. We have hit every continent except Antarctica. Do you guys get, um, <laughs> now I'm just thinking here, do you guys probably get people from, um, who are traveling, coming to Yosemite, the yes. Central Valley, for those yeah. kind of things? or for business or something, and then they, yes. they find out about you guys. Yes, a lot of people, but some people do come just for the farm experience. Just for the farm experience? Yes. Now, do you guys, you guys mentioned bed and breakfast. Um, for my foodies, do you guys serve uh, any of the, the, the fruit with the bed and breakfast? Of course, yeah. when it's in season. And then yeah. we also have a small family orchard of citrus. Okay. So we prepare freshly squeezed or um, organic or natural because we don't do anything with our orange yeah. with our citrus yeah. trees natural um, yeah. um uh, for breakfast we'll serve that with a with a breakfast or if they're not having breakfast we give uh, we give our guests a, a, a container um, of orange juice freshly squeezed in the mornings that's really cool um so so what's a good way to book this experience? Uh, your web, do you guys have a website? or we do. Um, is there a TripAdvisor or something like that? Well, we are on Airbnb. Okay. Um, but we actually prefer people to contact us directly. Okay. Um, there's a, the website is on the screen there. Um, and we then are able to um, just book kind of like a hotel. We just require a credit card. Yeah. Um, to book, we don't charge you till you uh, till you check in, or if you need. To, we have a cancellation policy, like a hotel. Um, so you can find us on Airbnb, or you can find us uh, go to straight to our website, and then just give us a call. Um, five five nine eight two four zero eight one one is uh, is our business phone. Now, can you bring dogs? Our dogs. So welcome? we have 
added, since our original farm stay experience, we have added a remodeled mobile home uh -huh. uh, that has two bedrooms, full kitchen, full bath, <clears throat> and it, it we allow pets in that space. Okay. So we do have a pet friendly space, and we are very kid friendly. Yeah, very accommodating. Um, we've just added chickens, so now, in fact, just this morning, our granddaughter went out and found a couple eggs and got to feed the chickens. Now are they now are they just kind of roaming around on the. On the they, we have them around? enclosed because we have yeah. a we have a dog and we have coyotes and we okay. have you know we have to protect them. Um, but they have their own, they're free, they can go, go, they have their own space. Yeah. They have their own space. It's very cool. So yeah, yeah, Central Valley so. Foodies, this is a really neat opportunity, um, whether you have kids, whether you and your, um, spouse or partner want to go, uh, check out, um, uh, Naylor Organics, you can go up there and stay seasonally, you can get bed and breakfast, um, have a nice place to stay and kind of experience the farm life, um, pretty unique experience. That's that's really really cool. Yeah, in fact, that's good. Truly unique and unforgettable. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, who, so who else is doing this in the Central Valley? <laughs> On stone fruit, nobody. Well, On stone fruit, nobody. who else is? Nobody? Farm stay. Farm stay. On farm stay, nobody. Uh, it's there's seven sycamores so, yeah. in Ivanhoe, which is McClellar Farms, and um, they have a. a couple buildings, two or three, I think, that they allow people to stay, but their main emphasis is uh, is uh, weddings and events. Yeah. So, um, and that's all that we're really aware of in this area. Of course, you can find a lot of uh, places in the country on Airbnb, uh -huh. but um, they may not have an experience like this. Um, Kern Family Farms. Kern Family Farms. Yeah, yeah. in there, but they're. They'll they're, be on next week. They'll be yeah. on next week. Yep. So they're they're in that up up a bit farther north. Do you guys go way back then, huh? We guys, do. Yeah. We yeah. do. So yes, uh, we we've been doing this. Uh, that brings us into the organic stone fruit jubilee. Um, yeah. This is our fifteenth year since since inception. We did. Uh, have a live event, an in-person event for uh, 13 years, I believe it was, and then the last uh, two or three years we've needed to pull back. Uh, we decided to take a year off, and then COVID hit, and so we uh, substituted fruit box sales yeah. for those years. But we are back to a live event. Smart. Yeah, we're going to yeah. talk about the and Jubilee in a second. So, yeah. So we're excited. So we actually have the <coughs> farm stay experience, and then we have the U-Pick, which does not require a um, you to be staying at our place. Um, and this is, uh, this is unique, uh, stone fruit, to be able to, to pick your own stone fruit. Um, it's a very unique experience. We have many... Uh, people who come that they grew their grandparents they farmed but many many people today uh, do not have access to a to a actually working farm an actual working farm or have never stepped foot on one yeah so it's a wonderful family experience sometimes the parents often the parents are more excited than the, than kids. the kids yeah because it's like kids are all it's hot you know but uh, the parents we like to say we make memories yeah the parents are coming and remembering when they went to their grandparents farm and they picked mangoes or you know other 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 maybe fruits other fruits perhaps maybe not peaches and so that's that's what we uh we also have that experience that's a wonderful service you guys provide, both uh, the U Pick and the Farm Stay. So, I mean, for all you guys out there, um, Central Valley Foodies, that's you kind of can do both. Um, and uh, so, what are your what are your favorite varieties? Uh, I, I have to ask. You have to ask. Yeah. You have to ask. So, I'm I'm familiar with some stone fruit. Uh, my my stepdad, I was talking about earlier. Um, he grows um, stone fruit in Ivanhoe, and um, my favorite variety is is called an O Henry, an O Henry peach. <laughs> <laughs> we all got our own. No, yeah. it, where I'm at, I did not grow a good O Henry peach. I leased a neighbor's property, and I couldn't make a juicy O Henry, uh -huh. and they could do it elsewhere. 
but uh, my favorite yellow peach comes off early. It's a Walt Krauss variety, and those who are familiar with Walt unique, Krauss, yes, he was a plant breeder from Reedley, hmm. and when he retired, Walt his Krauss. son okay, um, brought me his some varieties because I feel that they sold their ranch and it's all going to get pushed out. So <clears> I said, well, you can plant them here. Yeah. And so I got a variety called Schools Out. Schools Out. What's that, better than that? Hey, that's perfect timing <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> for the summer. Yep. And so, yeah. And it's a very sweet, you know, early season, or uh, mid -season, early mid-season peach. My favorite peach is, um, is a nectar peach. Nectar peach. Uh, for those that know, but it's a, not the original nectar. It's a nectar that came from actually back east, mm -hmm. and it's very aromatic, and very sweet, and just yeah, and big. And big. You know, we pick one pound peaches, and they're white. God, that sounds white. good. Yes. It's too bad we're not in season yet. Why now? Break um, your heart. Come, yes. in, come the last of July, you'll get some. Yeah, yes. I, I plan on making the Jubilee um, if I can get off work that day. Are you guys, uh, now do you guys grow what's called a, a pluot? Like a plum apricot? We have our Crimson Glow, which is a common variety. Okay. But it was developed by the same uh, person. Yeah, by the by, same person. By the same person. But it, you can, you'll find that at farmer's markets. Uh -huh. And it, it's our only pluot at this time. Um, we have on our on our three acres we have over 30 varieties of different uh, stone fruit mm -hmm. so each true each variety only has from like six to ten trees mm. uh, so it, they for foodies this is a big foodie thing our varieties are unique many of them you will find nowhere else I mean, absolutely nowhere else. And they are they were bred for flavor. Wow. And so they had, a lot of them have a, um, have a defect of some kind that made it so they could not be grown and sold commercially. So these were, they were propagated, propagated um, and by Krauss. And then these were his favorites for flavor. So all of the varieties, all 30 of them, are absolutely amazing regarding flavor, whether they be nectarines, um, whether they be peaches, plums, pluot, the pluot, um, apricots, um, and he gave them names. So we have our first apricots called a Heather Marie, and they get to be about this big. They're like a small peach. Wow. And they're so juicy and delicious. Oh, that sounds so good. And then we have, so we have four and now, well, six now varieties of apricots, different varieties. And then, and then we go have our nectarines and we have both yellow and white nectarines. And um, so we have some of them again, some of the, some of our latest varieties that we've planted are more familiar and are commercially a grown because yeah. we we have needed to replace some mm -hmm. of our trees and so we picked some of the uh, popular varieties yeah. so we have an arctic star white nectarine and um, yeah we have some of the uh, more popular white peaches as well so it's not that they're it's not that they're bad some of these more commercial varieties it's just a different thing almost like uh, kind of like heirloom like these ones that t tend to be more um, imperfect looking and uh, that you don't see and it's it's really neat when you see some of this stuff and you don't you don't you don't see this stuff at you know say Mart or wherever um, and but you go to a place like where you guys grow and specialize in this stuff and it's it's a whole different experience yeah and you can't get fresher than that you pick it you wash it you eat it yeah and, Mine uh, ripe and ready. Yes, it's yeah. like yeah, yeah. <laughs> tree ripened. It's not picked. Tree ripened, but it's yeah. tree ripe. It's, it's not literally... picked. It's not picked two months before and sitting to ripen. It's ready to go. Yeah. So the, our fields are, are geared for you pick. So they're not tall trees. So you have no ladders unnecessary. Oh, great. And good for kids. Yeah, yes. good yeah. for kids. And the field, it's it's almost groomed because you know you don't want to have any tripping hazards. And, yeah. And so it's it's no till. Yeah, no-till farming, I heard of that. So, yeah. so what is that for some of our audience? Uh, uh, so the ground doesn't get turned over. 
it just you know whatever grows and just it just decomposes on the ground annually so the ground is healthier ground is healthier. the roots aren't disrupted from the trees the trees tree roots are are closer to the surface instead of deeper down when they cultivate uh, they, they're trimming they're cutting tree roots creates kind of a better environment for the soil yeah better environment for the soil better environment for gophers which is a downside of it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you gotta watch out for them um, so let's talk about the stone fruit jubilee a little bit more um, we kind of touched upon it for a second but I wanted to kind of go into that more so the, the stone fruit jubilee traditionally held in Dinuba right in Clovis and Clovis for okay. many years it was held at MOA Oasis Garden in Clovis okay um, so those that have attended before will remember that experience being out in the orchard and uh, however we due to circumstances needed to change the venue um, all, of, all of the farmers you can see us all of the farmers that started <laughs> are our, our age are uh, maybe even a little bit younger but um, so we have expanded it to be the Organic Stone Fruit Jubilee and Small Farm Expo. So we are maintaining the uh, original organic uh, stone fruit, having that available for tasting. We're going to do tasting again this year. Woo! And we are going to be able to have uh, many of the, a few, few of the original growers, many who have been here over the years, and then we're adding a, a a new, a new grower because one of the family, uh, one of the families, the Bolt family farm, their son Nicholas now, Bolt is now um, on his own, farming on his own. So he'll be, yeah. he'll be there. So look at these farms, guys. I mean, so we got we got Blossom Bluff Orchards, we got uh, Bolt, like uh, uh, Nori just said, we got Fruit uh, Fairy Farms, Naylor Organics, um, Nicholas Bolt Farm, Olson Family Farms. Uh, Valley White Organic Farms and uh, and more and um, the events sponsored by Kern Family Farm. Yeah, right? and the gnarly carrot. And the gnarly there. carrot. Yep. So and they'll then, be on next week. And then and then Eco Farm uh, is our primary sponsor. So so that, ki so kids are free in the event. So kids, we yeah, yeah kids 12, 12 and under are free. Okay. And. Um, the price, the admission is $10 at the door, but if you want a little bit of a discount, um, you can go to our, uh, web, uh, to our website at fruitjubilee.com and purchase tickets um, for $8. <coughs> and we will uh, be having bag sales, if those are familiar with the event in the past. Uh, we have, we give you a, you can purchase a bag for $10. It holds uh, around three pounds of fruit. And then you can go select the stone fruit that you want uh, to put in the bag. Very so nice. um, we're, we're that's returning um, as one of the uh, as one of the uh, th things that people really really enjoyed about the previous uh, stone fruit jubilees. Now, do you guys have any? Uh, is there any music or what can we oh, expect? Yeah. When we, what can we expect when we walk in when we walk <laughs> good, into the good jubilee? Good medicine. Good medicine is the band. And oh, there will be entertainment. They've been they've been with us for many many years as well. Yeah. So that's going to be another big in the familiar valley. thing. Yes, great. And so they will be there for entertainment. Um, there will be indoor spaces that will be air conditioned, which is different than in the, in the past. Very we nice. Did, it, it, if it's a really hot day, you'll be able to get um, cooled off. And we are adding um, other produce. Um, because uh, small family farms are going the way of, of the dinosaurs, I guess you'd say. Um, they are diminishing. Um, there are less and less of them. Um, and so we're adding other small farms, and great. there will be vegetables. And we just found out we're going to have watermelons and cantaloupe. Uh, some uh, a, vendor, a, a fun grower that will bring, be bringing watermelons and cantaloupes as well. So it's gonna, there's going to be just a lot for people to enjoy. There's a kid's corner or a kid's craft activity area. So it's very uh, family friendly. And the, the Kerns are in charge of that. So when they okay. come, they can tell you much more about and that. And do, do, they, do they bring stuff from their farm as well? 
They will yeah. be this year. So yeah. they will be participating. Wow, this as, is a uh, true foodies event. And then we have food vendors. Food and vendors. we de generally um, give them some of our stone fruit if we're to make something special just for the event. Oh, wow. So, so like a food truck or something that comes so, out to make yeah. a... So we will have, and then uh, we will be having uh, beverages um, also. And uh, so um, tap trucks on, on board. And so we are, it's a, it's a, it's a full event. Um, and it's for all ages. And uh, we're just really excited to be able to be back in person. Have it reamped, have a new location, mm -hmm. have more farms right. added. Right, yeah, the, the location. Guys, go check out uh, Naylor Organics. Go on Google, check them out. Um, go on YouTube, look up the event, maybe from previous years. And uh, so this is Saturday, June 24th at uh, 4, it's 4 to 8, and um, wow, what a cool event. Yeah. I mean, what a cool inclusive event for small Central Valley farms. Like you said, there a lot are coming to a smaller uh, segment here, but to get them all in one area, one time in the summer, and bring all these different, um, you know, stone fruit, but also fruits and other fruits and vegetables in. Yeah, it's, so it's that, gonna be at the Kingsburg Historical Park. Kingsburg Historical yeah. Park, and so that's 2321 Sierra Street. Um, messages for details if, if you didn't hear that right um, but go check out uh, Naylor Organics um, you know you got a family you want to go check out them and, and stay with them for the farm stay and get that full farm experience bring your family or go out for the day and, and do a you pick um, give them a call all right is there anything else yeah. you want our audience to know oh man Anything? I could talk all day. I don't know if you yeah. want me to do that. That's why I've been quiet. We can talk all day if you'd like. We're, we're <laughs> yeah. also also adding vegetables to our U pick this, okay. this season. That's going to be something new. Is that from yeah. your farm as well, or from? Yes. yes. Yeah. It's going to. We have a garden. Um, um, everything is a bit later than last year, so uh, the best thing to do is always call or. Uh, yeah, give us a call, and we'll be happy to give you the latest information. A list on maybe what you guys have at that moment. Probably right. ch we try changes week to week. We do. We have yeah. a, uh, a MailChimp uh, email list, so okay. if you want to be on that, um, just let us know. Um, you can do that through. We have a Facebook page. We have one for both the Naylor Organics UPIC and the Farm Stay, two separate uh, web, uh, Facebook pages. We're on Instagram. Also, we have an Instagram for our UPIC and for our Farms Day account. Um, so you can Google us. Um, there's lots of ways to find us. And uh, we, we just love interacting with people. Um, yes, that's the best. The best part about the Farms Day is getting, we, everybody has a story. We get to share ours and other people get to share theirs with us. And so we just love interacting with our guests and with our UPIC guests. Um, um, so yeah, just just give us a call, get on our, our email blast and you'll get to know what's coming up every week. It comes out once a week on Mondays usually. Um, yeah. I so, bet you get some unique guests. Oh, definitely. You guys got any <laughs> stories of some, some unique guests you've had at the farm? I can only imagine. Oh my goodness. The Russian lady from Moscow. We, yes. We had a mother-daughter, right, come from, uh, from Moscow. And she has, uh, grows tomatoes as a hobby. She was, she came with her daughter and she was an older woman and so she's retired. And so she gave us some of her seed, tomato seeds, uh -huh. which we did plant and they were delicious. I wish we yeah. had saved our seeds from our plants, her plants. But, um, but yes, she was fascinating. Yes. Wow, that's cool. Get some seeds from different countries. Yeah. It, yeah. It was yeah. it was awesome. That talk about a foodie experience. Yeah. You know, these were from just specialty varieties, her favorites, and she shared with us. Yeah, she go through. I think she had thirteen or fourteen varieties in her garden. Tomato seeds. Tomatoes that she grew. Oh wow. Yeah. She, yeah was like, wow. So she know what she know what she was getting into with the you know the fresh produce and everything and <laughs> she was yeah. excited to be on the farm yes. yeah to come to our so, farm so so what is it what does it typically cost to come do a farm stay so we have we have four different spaces with four different prices 
We have our uh, bunkhouse room that is our economical room. Um, it's at it's going to be going up, but it, right now it's ninety five dollars a night, and it sleeps five. Oh. You have your you have a a, a bathroom, and you have a queen mm -hmm. bed, twin bunk beds, and a twin bed, and we provide coffee and tea. It's uh, organically organic coffee, uh, freshly ground for all of our guests. Um, in all of the rooms, they have a microwave, a refrigerator, the coffee maker. Um, and then we have the country comfort room, which is our um, accessible, ex for those that need accessibility. Um, so they are able to use that room. It has a walk-in, big, a big, uh, big shower um, you can um, use and you can, it also has the refrigerator, the microwave, and um, coffee is provided. And then we, for extra guests in that room, it sleeps uh, four, but for extra guests, we have an inflatable mattress for that. It's a good, then, good mix of everything. Yeah, and then we have the romantic garden room, and that's, uh, that's one, uh, one ten a night, and it has a jacuzzi tub. Oh, No okay. shower, but a jacuzzi tub. Yeah. And it overlooks uh, the orchard and the backyard with the gazebo and uh, the garden. So Probably get a lot of maybe anniversaries or um, things like honeymoon that. kind of we stuff. We had an engagement one time. Yeah. They came and they stayed there and they, they got engaged while they were there. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Cool and experience. Then, then we have the separate uh, cozy farm cottage that has that has, is pet friendly and has the two bedrooms, the full... Uh, the full kitchen, the full the bath, full bath, and um, yeah, and it sleeps up to six. So yeah. the whole range, and it's one one fifteen at this time. Prices are going up in June, so book book soon. Book soon. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Central Valley Foodies, get out and check these guys out. Um, I didn't realize you guys were on Instagram, but check out check out them Naylor Organics on Instagram. Check out their website. Um, give them a call if you want to um, be a part of this. You know really really unique experience to Central Valley um, and uh, to the country you know very like your European style you said this is common in, in other countries yeah it's a much more common in in Europe um, as, a, as a, a hostel to stay with with the uh, hosts the growers yeah at this time we are still kind of transitioning back to our original of course during COVID we were not able to enjoy breakfast with our guests, but we deliver breakfast to your room. So at this time, we're still kind of transitioning. Transitioning there, back to that. To there, so yeah. Well, so. Organic Stone Fruit Jubilee, again, that's Saturday, June 24th, 4 p.m., uh, Kingsburg Historical Park. Um, stay tuned, and um, thank you guys so much for coming out oh, today. Oh, thank you. You're very welcome. I appreciate it so much. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Yes.